What's up, World Wide Web? E Daddy, your angry guy, and we're going to have some 4th of July fun called the July Special. And I really had a hard time kind of saying that one, but anyways, so there's been plenty of figures done and made over the years, especially whenever we're looking at uh, anything that Mattel or Super 7's done, classics wise. I went through and basically devised a tournament. And I just realized I left a competitor out. It's alright, I'll find a place for him in the tournament. But, anyways, <clears throat> I went through all my figures I've got, whether they be boxed or still mint on card or I've got them loose. And I've thrown a few surprises in. So, we're going to take a look at each one real quick. Like I said, they're classics figures, okay? And we're going to let it go. There's basically eight brackets of 16 figures in each one and what's going to happen is I'm going to post up um, on the um, pages It'll be various pages and I can vote on which which classics figure do you think is the better one. It could be classics or filmation or the ultimates. Like I said, there's a little bit of everything in here. So everybody make sure you vote on this. Because the next video will be basically second round. So with that being said, let round one commence. All right, kicking off the tournament in the eighth bracket, start from the bottom, work our way up. Uh, we've got from Mattel the classic Cyclone versus the Super 7 done Lodar. All right, so. Cyclone, and I think I covered this in, you know, figure, yeah, you know, it had everything from the vintage look to a little bit of Super uh, 2000X to it, but you really couldn't do much with the, the disc other than use it, bring it around. And he could almost use it as a weapon if he wanted to. But yeah, there were... I mean, nicely done without a doubt. Like I said, a little bit of, you know, with the piece on back, a little throwback to the 2000X. Rest of it, straight up vintage look didn't spin didn't do anything fancy anything like that even though it had the little notch on it on the back but anyways so it's Mattel classic cyclone now we got a personal favorite or when everybody wanted for a while Lodar you know, straight from the mini comics. Come with his his prison chains, his mace. He looked full up like it. 
The only thing I really had a problem with, you know, is like the little soft rubbery armor there. And the fact that, in all honesty, is like he was just wearing like onesie, basically. Boots, pants all tied in together. But other than that, you know, he was well done just like he came off the from the mini comics. Okay. Anyways, kicking off round or sex or the eighth part of this. Cyclone Lodar. Which the figure you think was better done? Alright, kicking off the second match for Section 8 here. We've got Super 7's Trap Jaw come off the early mini comics Trap Jaw. They put in a three pack set, so you could only get this in a three pack set. Uh, visually, it looks awesome. Looks just like the, the character did in the uh, mini comics. The only downside was there was nowhere on him to put his weapons. But other than that, I mean, they covered, you know, the way he looked from top to bottom, just like he did in the mini comics. Like I said, visually, it looks very nice, very nicely done, without a doubt. Going up against, from DC, his old fish face, the old blue mer merman. In all honesty, I mean, they did a pretty good job with him. Couldn't really go wrong with it. I don't know why my camera is all acting up a little funny, but whatever. Anyways. Crap. Came with a sword, his trident. Wasn't much different than what we would get in a later round or a later bracket. But overall, it was not bad at all. Uh, Stephen being green, he was blue. So, anyways. Going to be up and posted. Super 7 Mini Comic Trap Jaw versus DC's Merman. Match number three in the eighth bracket. We'll start with first the Filmation Clawful. Like I told you, it's going to be a little bit of a minute on card stuff and loose. And there's still surprises. So don't worry. Uh, anyways, in all honesty, I mean, they. This one came from Maddie Collector. Basically, going to tell. Uh, made him look like the. Uh, Filmation counterpart gave him the the horn and his mace. The only thing they didn't, you know, and Filmation was bad about this, even in the cartoon. They didn't give him the bigger claw like what we'd see on, you know, his vintage figure, anything like that. But still, pretty good depiction here of Old Clawful. And his opponent. The ancestor of the Snake Man, Cobra Khan, uh, came with the variant head so he could have the regular, regular uh, Cobra Khan head, or you have it where the ears are flared out, which we really didn't get to see that until the 2000X series. Gave him his little snake pet boot 
you know you can put just about anywhere his gun much like what he had in a or with his finished toy counterpart uh, visually they did you know great job with this too this was a Mattel product so anyways so we got Cobra Con versus Filmation Clawful. All right, so next round, two main villains, Skeletor's crew. First off, we do get Evil Lynn. Now they made sure she was accurate with the vintage toy as far as the colors and everything goes, especially skin color. Gave her her staff and they threw in Screech, which was a nice touch. And her dagger, of course. Like I said, nicely done. Her opponent for this round, <coughs> King of the Doom Seekers, and I'm talking about Triclops, came with his Doom Seeker and all that. Head piece twisted and all that, and I just realized I was taking the whole head around. Came with his sword. May look like he had thrown knives on the back of his his vest. To me, it seemed like super. Uh, not super seven. I ain't gonna give him that much credit. Uh, Tail did a pretty good job with this. Yeah, the head's a little tricky to get all the way around. But it still works pretty well. So anyways. For your fourth match. Evil in. Triclops. Vote for which one is the better looking figure. Alrighty sports fans. It looks like we got our first surprise entry of the tournament. First off, our surprise entrant in this tournament, the anti eternia Stratos, with his bloody spear of Avion, done in dark blue feathers helmet, kept with the red eyepiece, red beard, but black skinned. Still had his jetpack, come straight from anti eternia just to prove that he was not somebody to be messing with trying to help anti attorney He Man take over regular Eternia. His opponent for this was the filmation accurate Merman. Gave him his sword, his spear of Rakash. His gun, not really a good place to put it, but i just been clipping it to the back of his uh, thing. I get to go back on there. So this round, it's Super 7 versus... E-Daddy Custom Creations. Alright, for this matchup, it is Mattel 
versus Super 7 in a Filmation figure showdown. First off, for Mattel, we had Beastman. Looked very much like his Filmation cartoon counterpart. I'm honestly still trying to figure out when he ever had or used a shield. Um, they had his whip. Everything was nicely done on him. They did kind of make his uh, harness out of a soft rubbery material, but considering the fact for this back piece, I can kind of see why. Uh, did make it to where it would, you could take it off if you needed to. Make sure he had the shoulder spikes. <clears throat> now, I've talked about it in previous videos, not liking the whole ankle thing like they did right here. But this one is actually pretty tight, so I'm not going to complain too much about it. But anyways, this is what we got from Mattel. Versus from Super 7, we got Manny Faces. Came with his gun like he did with his vintage toy. This gun with the Sith on, scythe on it. This gun. And his jousting spear with the hook on the end. Only issue really was on the face. Getting this thing to turn properly. And keep from damaging it. You guys try to do this and look at the camera at the same time. That ain't gonna happen. <clears throat> A little rough, but still better than what what happened with another figure. We'll talk in another round. But anyways, so we got Super Seven's many faces versus Mattel's Beast Man. All right, another surprise entrant, another Super 7 versus E-Daddy Custom Creations figure. We'll start with the Filmation Hordak here. Pretty damn close to looking like he did in the She-Ra series. I didn't care too much for the damn ankles. They did the same thing, game like these, and they were loose as hell. Did give him his cannon arm so he could switch his arm out. I have not had any luck getting these two to switch out. They also made sure to give us the imp, including what he would transform into. Then from E Day Custom Creations, where he got the anti Eternia Triclops, which an anti Eternia, he came from. From the island of Gar. He was one of the Gar. Gave him dual swords. Blue skinned of course. Yellow visor. Little different colors in the eyes. Eye pieces. And red and yellow. Armor. So forth. Everything's still the same. as like another. Like the other. Uh, regular. Triclops. So, anyways, for the seventh match, yeah, let me make sure of the eighth bracket. And Hordak, AE Triclops, vote. All right, the match that we were dreading. These two came from Super 7. Both of them filmation. First off, we've got the filmation Tila. Miss Four Butts. Miss Four Butt Cheeks up. 
Couldn't get the legs to go forward, just side to side. Be great for kicking. It's where they had the wide peg leg issue and the really kind of screwed up looking face. I mean, they did do a pretty good, decent job making her look like the filmation counterpart. Versus the cross-eyed sorcerers. Like I said, made her look like, you know, her filmation counterpart. They gave her an extra set of wings. So you can make her look like, throw her arms out. Like she was going to be transforming into Zor. Of course, when you did so, you could go through and put the different hit on here with the blue streaks on the side. On there. Now, this one, we did still have the white, little white on the pegs for the legs. And it almost looks like of course, with the feathery thing, she's got really wide hips. But anyways, here we go. Final match, eighth bracket. Tila, Sorceress. Which one was the better of the two evils? All right, kicking off seventh bracket, we'll have the Cosmic Enforcer with the regular boots, not the animal, not the beast feet version. So I'm thinking this is the DC one. Zodak with his gun, of course. Uh, make sure you know get the the hair look on him. You know as far as his upper torso went. <clears throat> and his gun. A little bit different from the uh, vintage version on the backpack. A little bit a little extra there. But anyways, still not too bad looking. His opponent. Let me get his, let me get his toys out. Now this one I had a little bit of some extra. That wasn't supposed to be in there extra. I went with somebody else that's not even in the tournament. But we're going to get that scare glow feller. Truly, pretty nice looking figure. They did a beautiful job. He will glow in the dark and all that. Came with this how. Halberd, halberd, bread, what, whatever you want to call it. This one's a little bent from getting set a little funny. And he come with his key of grace goal. But having some connections, I got, as far as I know, it's one of only two sets out there. Set of glow in the dark, battle armor. With the three different plates. It was based off the uh, armor that they used for uh, the battle armor faker that was in the two uh, the DC set, I think it was. But anyways, so yeah. Scareglow or Zodak kicking off the seventh the seventh bracket. And I tell you what, this seventh bracket's got some heavy hitters. The more I get to looking at the board, I'm going, holy shit. Anyways. Kicking off this bracket, and I gotta get her little, all of her stuff out too. Was Queen Marlena? 
Now, I know Queen Marlena did come with Cringer, but we're not basing this off of what, you know, that, off of the figure itself. Now, she did come with her spacesuit, which if you took the royal gown off, you'd go through and put her spacesuit on with her helmet and all that. And she had the guns for it. You can even change out the, uh, the queen's head for the regular one, so I fit better. She has a sword in her staff. Where did it come up down there? Oh man, that's why you don't work with plastic bags during a show. Came with this fourth one. She's in her royalty. And her gun belt and her other gun for whenever she's in their pilot's outfit. Versus, this one's a two pack. The White Palace Guard, because he never actually, I don't think he had a name, but I have to backtrack and take a look. But, anyways, they also came with halberds as well. I'm just not pulling them out for this. Head sword, axe. And I just realized, oh yeah, there's his mace. Mace too. Thank you. Anyways. Um, then he had to pop off a piece of his mask. So you can actually never tell who was who behind the mask. Behind the shield and all that. Full armor. And all that. Uh, they did a pretty good job with the armor and everything. But anyways. So you got the White Palace Guard. Not trying to sound racist. And I'm going to sound that way later on. I will apologize to any of my viewers who are not white. If you're African American, or if you're uh, from Mexico, from Chile, from Guatemala, from Paris, from France, or from Paris, from Spain, England, Russia, wherever. But, anyways, Queen Marlena, the white dude behind the palace guard outfit. There you go. All right, for this round, we've got, from New Adventures, we've got the former leader of the Evil Mutants, and I'm talking about Flog. Four Horsemen, actually, with this one, they pretty much, they did a really good job with him. Armament, head look, weapon, everything. Did a great job on the design and all that. Very detailed, without a doubt. Like I said, former leader of the Evil Mutants until Skeletor showed up. But like I said, they did a pretty good job with this. His opponent. And like I said earlier, we got a lot we got quite a few heavy hitters in this round. Or in this bracket. We have the Filmation He-Man, <clears throat> complete with the Filmation Power Sword, a sheath that actually works on the back. Only bad side of this was the ankle joints setup they did on this. Made him really hard to stay standing and everything. But I don't know how Filmation accurate this really looks, but whatever. But anyways, so that's your choices for this matchup. It's Flog versus He-Man, Filmation He-Man. Man, we're in that heavy hitter bracket. 
course, I guess we're going to have a lot of heavy hitters as the bracket's going, but this one does have seen like quite a few heavy hitters. All right. So, leading them off, leading this matchup off, so blast attack. The hell just dropped. Oh, he does have a horde bracelet. You know, as a kid, I always wondered if he actually deserved to be in the horde. Get on it, anyways. Anyways, they did a really good job on on the detail for blast attack. Honestly, I think it's like a a uh, very underrated uh, figure. I mean, overall, I mean, they did a great job with the leg detail, boots, the chest piece, the arms. Uh, so did a good job with bringing him together. His opponent for this, straight from Super 7, we get the Ultimates Faker. Which gave us an Alcala style faker head. Different swords. Including half of a power sword. Which we would get right here. We did have the normal faker head that would look like the normal he-man and then we also did get the uh, battle damaged face I don't really like how my camera starting to act here but anyway so that's your choices for this round blast attack ultimate faker all right so this round prince of eternia versus the defender of etheria first we get prince adam and yes i know he came with orko but we're not basis on the packs. If we were, well, I'd be in a different, doing a different thing. Anyways, kept true to vintage with the even the pink, I'll say magenta colored sword. Everything, but going against. His sister, in, who's in her alter ego, She-Ra. <clears throat> now, this one I've got two different heads for. For her. Because you had the She-Ra like this, and then... The She-Ra head. Kind of like what you get with the toy. She had her sword. I think I've got the bubble power sword with it, but it was missing a stone on the back side. But anyway, so yeah, that's the next match up here. Prince Adam versus Shira. Let the votes commence. All right, here we go. Once again, another matchup of Super 7 versus Mattel. All right, so filmation-wise, Super 7 gave us a Mad Arms. Very filmation accurate look to him. Um, actually made to where the armor could pop off, even though you might have to damage it a little bit. Still had that rubbery stuff. 
They gave him his cannon. They gave him this little piece here so he could make it look like it was shooting out of his hand, kind of like the way it shows in the uh, opening credits for the cartoon. And his mace. Now, as far as his gun, go his uh, cannon goes, I went through and had somebody make me a special one. Look like he was already shooting out. Icy blast. Anyways, this was our presentation from Super 7. Now, Mattel went through and they gave us an evil Lynn. Very filmation accurate. With the the crystals of Rakosh. Yeah, whatever. Her magic scepter. And a bonus head in case you wanted to go through and take off this one and put this one on there. So here we go. It's Mattel versus Super 7. Evil Lynn versus Man at Arms. Alright, we're winding down the seventh bracket. Got this match, one more to go. And boy, we got some heavy, heavy hitters coming up in the final match of the seventh bracket. I mean, anyways. So basically, we got the other Eternian Palace Guard, which we'd come find out later, was actually Clamp Champ underneath here. Same as the other one. Had the battle armor, axe, shield, mace, halberd as well. Thing pops off. And the thing I forgot to include on the uh, other Palace Guard is actually they came with uh, extra heads to go through and show what they'd look like as if they'd gotten changed uh, into a snakeman which I forgot to put in the, with all this stuff but anyways so you got him okay versus clawful they did a great job with this, including with the oversized claw that would open and everything. They gave us the 2000X head and the regular head, which I've got in a bag, like the figure. Now with this, since it is like two different versions, I gave him two different shields. He had his red one and I threw in the green one. And then like two different maces just color difference but anyways so there you go clamp champ eternian guard or clawful the heaviest of the heavy hitters of the video of this entire thing we get the man that holds it all of eternity together, Procrustus. The only thing he's missing is his basically the orb with the magical powers of the sword of he. I'm sorry, they did fan fucking fantastic putting him together. Parts move and all that. This was great without a shadow of a doubt. Versus Megator, who came with his big old ball and chain. And they gave him his zombie head, so if you want to take this one off, put this one on. Once again, they did a pretty good job with him. Oversized, yes, but boy, is he. They did a great job with these without a shadow of a doubt. So anyways, you got old Procrustus versus Megator in and out the seventh bracket.
kicking off the fifth bracket, we've got from the He-Man movie, or the Master Universe movie, Sarad. He was also in the newspaper strips. So it's kind of where he got added in from. That's right here. I'm sorry. They, I think I've already said this before, but they really did a great job putting this one together. Detail, everything for Sarad. Awesomely done. In all honesty, they absolutely knocked it out of the park with the way this figure looked. His opponent for this fifth bracket is Queen Angela. Sword, one. And wings that spread out bigger than shit. You know, they did a pretty good job with her, too. I think. All things considered. So, anyways. Yeah, that's your... For this fifth round. Sarad. Angela. Who's it going to be? All right. Surprise, surprise comes out of this matchup. I'm going to enjoy this. Super 7 versus an E Daddy creation. We have Anti Eternia Cyclone. No difference really in the regular Cyclone other than. Instead of him being a guard, he's Caucasian, wears all black, exception of the red, still has the red thing in the back. I said the anti eternia Cyclone versus Super 7's Filmation Triclops. Now, don't get me wrong. He's very filmation accurate from the way he looked all together. The gun, the sword. Anybody got the original one? His headpiece actually would not turn to where his eyes would spin around not one bit. Uh, I got lucky. A buddy of mine hooked me up with the spare head that would actually, where his visor would turn, that they sent with the second wave of filmation figures. For anybody that ordered directly from Super 7, both that wave and the first wave. But, anyways, it's going to be Anti Eternia Cyclone Filmation Triclops. All right, Devlin back a little bit here. Mattel went into the 2000X profile and brought us uh, Queen Grayskull, otherwise known as Vina. Um, they did something different with the wings, just put them in two different spots there on her lower back. Gave her this. So she was the original sorceress, basically, after, after King Grayskull's death. Um, honestly, this has got to be one of my favorites out of the, for all the women that got done in the series, especially anything that came from 2000X. They did a beautiful job with this. So her opponent, this one's a Maddie, Filmation Trap Jaw. Gave him his energy bow, his fly swatter, and his gun. Um, they did a great job making sure he was very accurate on how he looked and everything. They even made sure his mouth would open. Looks like they used a little bit of overspray on his cheeks and stuff, to be honest.
But anyways, so there you go. Is it going to be Queen Grayskull? Or is it going to be Trap Jaw? Continuing on here in this fifth bracket, we got supposed to be Filmation Skeletor. The only thing that's Filmation about him is boots and the headpiece. Uh, what is it called? Uh, Team E's uh, Crave Custom because. A friend of mine had partial to do with the majority of this, and then I added the uh, staff and gave him the 2000X twin blades. But anyways, so we'll say 2000X Filmation Skeletor. Versus... buzz off and with this one I've got the 2000X head he's got his wings he's got his extra pieces in the back did come with the vintage style head the 2000X head you had to get with uh, the heads pack came with his axe staff and his regular axe so anyways there you go will be Skeletor or Buzz Off for this matchup. Alright. This matchup, we're going to have the rider that came with the Classics Roton. And I'm talking about the Skeleton. Uh, so it's that body and everything like Skeletor except for a different headpiece. Came with a spear and all that. They did a wonderful job with the articulate or not the articulation, but the sculpt and everything as far as his headpiece. And everything goes. So very nicely done. His opponent will be Keldor from 2000X that they did. Um, the only thing I didn't like about the original Keldor was they with his uh, chest piece. So I went through and I actually colored it a little bit different and all that. My own little personal touch, but anyways, I love the fact that you know they incorporated Keldor into this. So, anyway, so here we go. Skeleton, Keldor, which one's the better one? All right, this round, two pretty good heavy hitters. We've got Stinkor, came with his gun, full suit. Now, mine, I don't have the... The alternate head instead I've got the head that looks like the vintage one I don't have the 2000 or the extra head it kind of looks like the one like the extra head you come I came with merman but they got him all right they got him pretty good love the articulation of the hair and everything up arms legs chest and all that including the little piece on the back his opponent is Whiplash. Now, I gave him an extra spear to go with this. And this ain't the actual 2000X head, but I found one, I made it so it would look kind of like the way it needed to. Then we've got two more of Skeletor's 
henchmen going one-on-one. -on -one. Which figure looks better? Stink or or whiplash. Man, you tell I'm getting tired. I've been calling this whole bracket the fifth bracket, and this is actually the sixth bracket. I still got five more brackets to go. Get some sleep and finish the rest of this tomorrow. Anyway, so we got Vicor. He was the original idea for He Man to start with. Did a great job on giving him the bonus, you know, furry cape. Uh, and way almost like King Conan, to be honest. Uh, they did a really great job with him, I think. His opponent. One, to me, one of the baddest dudes in the horde, and I'm talking about Leech. Now they made sure to go through, and they gave him the flat pieces for his feet, the hand suckers, and the open mouth. Even though he don't work like the vintage toy did, uh, but anyways, yeah, this is the. This is it, so it's gonna be Leech or Vicor. Which one you guys like better? And winding out the sixth bracket, it's the Battle of the Tongues, and I'm talking about the Tongue Lashers. So Super 7 gave us a Filmation Tongue Lasher, and I'm sorry to this day, I still can't see Tongue Lasher being a Horde member, even though I know he was at some point as well. Uh, they gave him the jetpack to go on his back, his gun, and an alternate head that had the tongue sticking out. Like I said this is their Filmation take on it. Versus Mattel's regular tongue lasher, and I had not noticed this till I was getting them out of the uh, the bags I I keep all my loose figures in. They actually had the horde thing along with having the snake men emblem. Now, this how he came out of the box too. By the way, he had a snake men staff. His bow, like he was a member of the horde. And they made sure to give him the extra head with the really long tongue. So, which of the tongue lashers do you like better? Super 7's take or Mattel's take? That's it for the sixth bracket. All right, now we're going to officially kick off the fifth bracket. I think during the sixth bracket, I said, oh, it was fifth a couple times. But anyways, this is the official start of the fifth bracket. We got some heavy hitters in this. At least I think so, but eh, it's not up to me. It's according to what y'all think. So, first matchup of this is the Ultimate Skeletor, which I had an extra, an extra head made and brought in for this one. He did come with his staff, both the half sword, his regular sword. Now, the Ultimate Skeletor did also come with a plethora of heads. This one is not one of them. Actually, I just realized there's two of them that's not part of this. Because I also threw in the uh, toothless head from the uh, robot chicken Skeletor. Where he's with uh, Molar. <clears throat> but it did come with regular Skeletor head. The Akala 
Skeletor head and a Prince Keldor head. Um, they did do better design with the feet and the legs and all that. Gave him his cape and all that. Anyways, Ultimate Skeletor. His opponent for this was the Classics Ram Man. <clears throat> one that we all rather enjoyed. In his red and silver tunic, green pants, black boots. Thing is massively huge. Came with his axe. One thing is, unlike the Ultimates, Rain Man did not have the spare head. Okay. But anyways, so kicking off the fifth bracket. Skeletor. Ultimate Skeletor. Rain Man. You guys make the choice. Alright, coming up next. So we've got the second edition He-Man from Mattel, the one that had the original on the uh, box or on, on the packaging. They get He-Man, both swords, his axe, his shield. Uh, about as plain as any He-Man could actually get. A lot of us know we always all had issues with the ankle joints on just about any He-Man that any of us ever got. But anyways. He-Man. So then, his opponent for this first round. Too bad. Now they went through and they gave him his mace, gave him his shield. They should put the arms at the side. Different colored boots for each one uh, went through and made sure on his purple side you know to get the scales in and all that so anyways that was for this matchup so which one do you think which one did y'all like better he-man or too bad Continuing on. First third matchup in the fifth bracket. We got Chief Carnivus. They brought this one straight up out of the 2000 X series. 200 X series, whatever. Um, you know, they went through a lot of good design work. Another one of those kind of underrated figures, without a doubt. You can tell they kind of used uh, a little bit of Beast Man and uh, maybe some from Grizzlore underneath this. Removable cape and all that. Actually, a pretty nice figure. Another one that's kind of underrated a little bit. Mattel done. His opponent, straight from Super 7's Club Grey Skull collection, was the Filmation Grizzlord. Uh, very Filmation accurate, which is better than what we got whenever we saw the prototypes. Uh, gave him a shield, gave him his wand blaster. Actually looks a lot bigger than what he looks on screen. But I think they did a pretty good job with it. But once again, it ain't up to me, it's up to you. So anyways, for this round, it's going to be Grizzlor or it's going to be Chief Carnivus. Which one of the two do you think they did a better job on? Which one do you like better?
All right, halfway point of this fifth bracket. We've got Count Marzo. Yeah, he was shown a little bit in filmation, but he was brought more to life in the 2000X series. Came with a sword, his amulet, badass goatee that I really miss having myself. Um, honestly, they did a great job making him look like his 2000X counterpart. Without a doubt. Even a little thing on the side for him to be able to hold his shield or his sword and all that. <clears throat> and his opponent for this round is Horde Prime. Came with this helmet piece to go up on top. Sparehead of what they actually said he used to look like or his it was his brother, one of the two. And his staff. And I'm pretty sure it had more than that. Mine doesn't. But anyways. Horde Prime. They actually did a really great job on how they made him look. And everything. They just went out of the way. With the design on this. The sculpt on this. To me is absolutely fucking fabulous. But probably one of my top five favorite looked figures so all right so this round which one was better horde prime count marzo it's up to you two or up to you guys all right <clears throat> so here we go We've got Perfuma, and they really went overboard on the uh, odor for her. Gave her a shield, and her rose gun. Both up, uh, both that and the figure are really strong. I'm going to have a hard time making it through this round. Versus up, and I'm going to get him ready while I try to recover a little bit. Get the video to act up right. Amazing how it looks, and I'm like absolutely paused on all this. And yet, yeah, still recording. Mm hmm. <laughs> Where it says it is at least this dude had a lot of shit with him all right versus Rio blast Everything was like figure, except you actually snap it on. Has big giant twin guns that went over the top of him. And slid back down. Just didn't like the fact he didn't want to stay on very well. Uh, hoses went around to his arms. I guess so he could control the gun. Help control the guns on his hands. They had the guns he held out of his hands, guns from the pieces up on his thighs and his chest piece. 
So anyways, what's it going to be? Perfuma Oreo. All right, so for this round, we've got Despera. Play with her staff. Two swords. Variant head that you go through and pop this one off, put this one on so we look like in her full, full Despera mode. I tell you what, Adora, Despera, whatever you want to call her, she's getting a lot of time here. Her opponent is one of the shortest people in the in all this. A little Gwildor here, straight from the movies and also the uh, newspaper strips. Came with the uh, this for his oh, basically his whatever they did a pretty good job getting him pretty accurate and everything so anyways yeah so anyways you got Despera Wildor which one do you guys like design better All right, two matches to go in this fifth bracket. So we get from Filmation, of course this wasn't part of the Filmation line, regular classics line, we get Plundor. And it was funny because he came with Skeletor's axe that we saw several times and came with his gun. But they depicted the purple bunny pretty well, without a doubt. Probably like the rest of us, we probably usually put them in with the filmation stuff. But anyways, we did get the purple bunny versus the 2000X look of Evil Seed. Came with his his staff and his plant critter, whatever you want to call it. Um. Now he did a pretty good job, I think, depicting Evil Seed with how he looked on this. I think they could have used this by a little bit more on like towards like making a 2000X Moss Man, but that's just me. But anyways, so which one do you guys like? They did a better job on. Was it the Purple Bunny Plundor? Or was it the evil plant, evil seed? Last matchup in the fifth bracket. We'll get Mr. Voltec here. They gave him almost like the same kind of wings as they used with Angela, except darker colors. And. Did him up pretty nicely. Typical horde member. He's got his bow. And he's got his rope with his neck harness on there so he can capture somebody. Uh, pretty nicely done, to be honest with you. Nice scope they did on the on the bird feet. Like I said, couldn't go wrong here. Pretty good. Pretty good. His opposition, I know I'm missing some stuff for him. Like his... His, uh... Snake staff. With old snake face. Do have his shield. His pieces that go up here in his chest for whenever you switch out the heads on him. And all that. 
this was another one. I really liked the way they did this one and gave it options and stuff. I always thought they did a really decent job with this one too. So, all right. Voltec, Snake Face, which one did you like better? All right, so that that ends the one half of the tournament. It's only 64 of them. There's still 64 more characters to enter this fight. We'll do that on a se separate video because trust me, I've done four brackets for this first part. We'll get the second round of brackets done. You guys are going to let me know. So we can go through and we can do round two. So, all right. Till next time. See how it goes. For the best design, best sculpted one. See ya. Votes are up to you.